All right, hi there everybody, it's Philip here from PMA03, and we were asked a rather interesting question. Can we explain the difference between a web-based application and native application on mobile devices? While it might sound a little counterintuitive, this question really speaks to where we were maybe five years ago in the development cycle. Five years ago, we were developing applications that required native code, which means that they weren't JavaScript, they were usually only web-enabled through a single-service API or through a custom backend on the client server. So in order to run, it had to be coded for that specific platform. It didn't run on anything else. You couldn't access the information on that mobile device uh, anywhere else, even on, on the website, unless it was built into a common database. But today, with the way applications are designed and, and how robust HTML5, JavaScript, how far CSS has expanded, we can actually take the world of the web and put it onto mobile devices. And so instead of having all of these native applications that we have right now, we actually have a new system called the hybrid application that allows us to still code it if we need to for, for a specific device, but include web content or web-related APIs and services that are available on normal websites into the mobile application. Web-based applications, on the other hand, are nice. I use quite a few for here at work. I can't show you any of those as they're proprietary, but we use a uh, charting program and a livestock trading program that is a single Java-based web app that allows us to run it in any browser on any device to track real-time stock tradings and things like that. And where the future is going for us, why it's relevant to know what the difference between the native, the hybrid, and the web app is, is because in the future, we're going to be developing more for the web side of things than we are going to be developing for native devices. As we stand right now, this is true. 99% of all mobile games are not profitable. And there's a reason for that. They fit a specific need that developer wanted. Not necessarily the need that the consumer wanted, but what the developer wanted to make. They're not profitable because of the development cost as well as the production cost to have it published to the platform. As you can see, that little tiny sliver there in the center is actually the profits for creating a mobile game. But that's not really much for us as developers. Where do we go from here? Where do we say that as developers, where do we want to make our money? We take a look at what's available to us in the web sphere and we go, well, what can we offer people? What can we do? And that's where we come over and we say that enterprise development, creating applications or web services that can run on mobile applications for the enterprise teams are where we want to be at. And it's a little bit counterintuitive as we can see here. We can see app audience granted. I mean, look at the, the, the breakout here. It's a huge percentage. Our consumers, about 76% of them, will use a mobile app at one time in their life. However, that's not where most of the money is. Instead, we take a look at who really needs the mobile development. As we can see, consumers really don't really need that. Professionals are really involved into the development cycle as are enterprises, and uh, consumers are not really that involved in the cycle. But the really big shock right here is the revenue by audience. When I create a simple consumer application that's specifically targeted to the phone, that does not generate near as much revenue as would, say, a professional application, a professional application like GarageBand that is available on your computer but doesn't usually talk to your mobile phone. That creates more money, but it's still not as popular as what enterprises need. And it's important to note for us as developers that while the consumers are there, our future will be interfacing new technologies with the current technological innovations that we have. Leap Motion, for example, when they came out with their touch device where you can wave your hand over the computer to do what you want. They ask developers to go, what can you make with this? And that's where that direct revenue bar comes from there. Enterprises are asking developers, what can you do? But it's very, very important to understand that even though our future is going to be working on the interface side of things, we have to be very careful about how and what we're developing for. In fact, take a look at this. By 2016, 20% of enterprises will bring their own device programs, will fail. And then by 2017, the browser on mobile endpoint devices will be used as a sophisticated application with 50% of new web apps involved developing complex client-side JavaScript. But what does that mean? That means basically the Chrome browser on this iPhone or even the Safari browser on this iPhone will be the primary method for me to access all of my applications. I won't need the App Store anymore. And that is actually a great thing because the more we move into that level of technology, the more we move away from the owned technology that's currently out there. In the future, we want to move into a more unowned technology to allow innovation to happen organically, to respond to innovation and needs. And so for us, the future is, is great for the web app side of the house. So I hope that gave us some perspective on you know where we need to realize that our application development efforts are going to be at and where I think that uh, knowing currently how applications are developed is, is very important. I hope to see you guys next week and you have a great day.